Today we are having our very first uh, tech talk, which is going to be a new series that we're implementing from the careers team where we are speaking to experts in the industry. And today we are going to be talking specifically about self-driving cars and the autonomous systems industry. So really exciting. We get a lot of questions and interest from students around this topic. So we're excited to start our very first one. Um, on this topic and give you all some insights into the industry as well as hear from our expert. So um, if you have not seen me before, uh, my name is Brett Ellis. I am a career coach here with Udacity. Um, I work with students primarily um, on helping them with their job search process, personal branding, uh, different things around those topics. Uh, my background is in higher education and made that transition to career coaching in general and working with professionals. I'm glad to be back in the place of working with students and I love doing these types of interactive workshops. So um, if you do have any questions regarding the actual job search process or want help post uh, viewing this session, feel free to schedule a coaching call with myself or any of our other career coaches on staff. And we are joined today by Vienna Harvey. If you want to go ahead, Vienna, I'll let you take it away. You're going to give a much better intro of yourself than I will. Sure. Thanks for having me, Brett. Great to be here. So as you can see here, my name is Vienna Harvey, and I am a tech coach here at Udacity in our School of Autonomous Systems. So what that means is that I work with mentors and students who are taking our autonomous systems nano degree programs. And I also manage our self-driving car that we have at the office here. Her name is Carla. And for anyone who's taken our self-driving car engineer nano degree program and done the capstone project of that program, Carla is the car that we use to test actual student code on, which I think is pretty cool that students get to see their code run on an actual car as part of that nano degree. Very cool. So today um, I want to run through the agenda a little bit and really set some expectations for this session. Um, considering the fact that this is a new session, we want to make sure that students have an understanding what the purpose is as well as uh, what it isn't designed for. So um, the first thing we want to make sure that students are aware of is this is not a session to ask questions uh, specifically about your nano degree program or about your projects. Um, this is going to be more so focused on higher level topics as it relates to the industry, as well as hearing from Vienna specifically about her individual career path and how she kind of found her way into this industry and what she thinks of the future of the industry. So we'll hear about some hot topics as well as industry trends. Um, we'll ask that uh, Vienna shares with us a little bit of a, a the technical side of some, some career advice because as you might have found out, a lot of our career coaches are really experts on the job search process and human resources. And we're not coders, we're not programmers, we're not developers or data scientists. So it's great for us to have guests who are experts in those industry because th those people can oftentimes provide perspectives that we can't. Um, and then we'll open it up at the very end for some Q&A to answer any questions you might have, either about some of the things that were shared or maybe some things that you weren't able to gain from the session. Um, and then we'll close out and share with you some other resources uh, pending that. But other than that, I'm gonna stop the screen share and it's gonna be very conversational between me and Vienna. And so um, if you would like to, Vienna, I want you to just kind of share with the group and the students who may be watching this replay a little bit about how you, from the very beginning, I wanna know kind of what sparked your interest in this industry, how you kind of decided this was a, a path for you. And you can also talk a little bit about the, the steps you took to get there. And then if we have time, maybe talk about kind of like your big next goals. Sure, so my interest in self-driving cars started in my junior year at Stanford when I was taking a class called Ethical Issues in Engineering. And for my final project for that class, I chose as my topic self-driving cars. And I did my project on ethics and self-driving cars. I thought that was really cool. And so the following year, my senior year, I took that same project and expanded it over the course of an entire year into an honors thesis about ethics and the design of self-driving cars and how we can design ethical self-driving cars. 
that was what initially sparked my interest in the field. And at the time, I had a family friend who worked at Udacity who had read my thesis and showed it to David Silver, who leads our self-driving car program here. And she ended up introducing me to David. And so then several months later, when I was looking for a job, I reached back out to Udacity and was hired here to work on our self-driving car programs. And I've since expanded that to managing several of our nano degree programs within the School of Autonomous Systems, but I do still manage our self-driving car as well. As you may have guessed from the topic of my thesis, something I am really interested in is sort of the ethics, design, legal side of self-driving cars, as opposed to specifically focusing on just the technical side. So I think it's really exciting to see some of the recent developments that are emerging in the self-driving car industry and how things like design and regulation are starting to come into play a little more. Very cool. So I think you mentioned something that's very important for us to acknowledge and something that we have conversations with students a lot about is that, you know, whether it's it was your college degree or whether it's a student's nano degree, oftentimes that's not enough in order to secure someone a job. So you mentioned like the connections that you were able to pull on as a way to kind of work your way into the industry. And so I'm really glad that you mentioned that point because a, a lot of students, they really kind of focus solely on um, going in and applying for jobs online. And that's really their only strategy. Mm -hmm. And so I'm glad that you touched on that. Um, and I want to encourage other students, like regardless of the nano degree program that you're interested, making sure that part of your strategy also includes um, some networking building um, for the industry that you're trying to get into. So um, along kind of those lines and, and talking about like what you're really interested in, what is kind of um, going on in the industry, what do you see as some of the things that people should be aware of if they're considering going into this industry? So um, maybe um, untapped areas that, that have high potential for career growth or maybe just things that a lot of people in the industry are talking about. What are the, the hot topics and the trends that, are, that you're seeing within the self-driving car and autonomous systems industry? As far as jobs go, I would say something to be aware of is that a lot of the actual jobs out there may be more specialized than you would initially think. For example, our nano degree program is called self-driving car engineer, but that's really just a broad overview. And if you are to actually go into a job at a company that's working on self-driving cars, it's quite likely that you'll end up in a role that's called perception engineer or sensor fusion engineer or something that's more specialized. So if you have an area of particular interest that you know you really want to go deep in that area, I'd say that's great. Do that and really pursue becoming an expert in that more specific area if that's something that you're interested in. Or you can go the other route and start out by establishing yourself as a very well-rounded generalist and be good at a lot of different things and figure out maybe later where you want to go in as a specialty. As far as the companies that are out there, a lot of what we're seeing right now is companies that are trying to find, similar to the jobs, companies are themselves finding specific little niches that they want to go into. For example, Voyage, which was founded by people who came from Udacity originally. They are working on self-driving cars for a retirement community. And so it's a very specific area. It's very limited scope. And so that's let them really become a front runner in their specific area. And that's something that I think we're seeing with a lot of companies is that rather than trying to cover the entire board at once. They're just picking a specific area of focus to begin on. Okay, great. And so let's say, for example, somebody is interested in kind of this industry of autonomous systems, but not necessarily going the self-driving car route. Are there any other um, options that you think kind of the, the education and the skills that they're learning in the nano degree might prepare them for? Absolutely. So we have... A lot of exciting developments with drones recently. I'm sure people have heard a lot about that. Maybe you've heard about the Amazon delivery drones. There is a company I like a lot called Sail Drone that has autonomous little ocean drones to take ocean health measurements, essentially. 
So that's kind of a completely different path from self-driving car, but still within the world of autonomous systems. And then more generally, the field of robotics, which is another of our autonomous systems programs, that's a very exciting field. There's always new developments coming out of that. So I think even if self-driving car is not necessarily your thing, if you're interested in autonomous systems more generally, there's definitely something for you out there. Awesome. That, I think that'll be really helpful for a lot of people. Um, okay, so now I want to kind of shift over to like specific topics. So um, we'll talk to a lot of students in coaching sessions. They are pursuing this standard degree. They're learning um, this specific topic. Um, but a lot of them, at least from my understanding, this seems like an industry where you jump in entry level into a self-driving car engineer type role. So <laughs> um, obviously you can see I'm not the technical expert, but what are some what are some initial steps? Because I think that's where students struggle most is that first step in terms of I, I either am about to finish my nano degree program or I just finished my nano degree program and I'm looking for ways to gain experience. What is your best advice for somebody in their like very first step? Something that I've heard a lot from companies that we have worked with as I've talked with them is that they can teach you the specifics of their company or their role, but they can't necessarily teach you to be a good software engineer. And so even if you're interested in self-driving cars or drones say if you can get good hands-on experience more generally as a software engineer that will probably help you in the long run and so even if you're struggling to get into the specific industry niche or the specific company that you're looking at i would recommend expanding your horizons a little bit and it's okay to take a first job that's not exactly what you want to be doing or exactly where you want to be if you think about how you can use that as a stepping stone into a later role. Okay, and, and, and so as, as someone who may be pursuing software engineering, that's pretty broad, right? Are, yeah. there, are there any specific things that you would recommend like that they do? So maybe um, one of the things that you know I've shared with some students is, you know, maybe find a software engineering job at a automotive company or yeah. at, at somewhere where you're going to be doing some sort of related work. So as it relates to that, like if they are getting their start in software engineering, do you have any kind of like unique tips that you would provide or specific direction that you think they should go in? I think that's a really good point about doing related work or being in a related position. So I would definitely agree with that, that even, even if it's not quite what you want, if you can find something that's maybe still at a company you're interested in, or maybe a similar role to what you want, but at a company that you don't see yourself in long term, and just kind of trying to find those related things that can help you incrementally get closer to where you want to be. Okay. And then right. Brett, you mentioned earlier networking as well. So that's obviously very important as well. Just as you're doing this, continue to meet people, reach out to people, and form those connections that can help you get to where you want to be. So yeah, you actually like read my mind a little <laughs> bit. So um, I talk about the importance of networking all the time and how like the, the hiring system in general, I feel is kind of broken in terms of like most companies are pointing, pointing people in the direction of their online systems, but most people are not necessarily getting hired that way. And so I push networking very heavily. So maybe you can shed some light on some great networking opportunities for people within this specific industry. Yeah, so I think I can't overstate the importance of networking. Before I say anything else, I'd like to also just point out that a lot of people get kind of freaked out by the term networking and they think it means just like schmoozing with people and not being genuine and throwing your resume around everywhere. And it doesn't have to be that. Any conversation that you have with anyone else you encounter, that can be networking. And I think if you approach it with that mindset that networking is more just a side effect of the interactions that you have as you go about your life, that can help make it seem less intimidating. Now within autonomous systems, there are a lot of really great resources and events that go on. So I, I mean, just LinkedIn can be a really great resource. If you find groups that you want to join or topics that you're interested in following, that can then start to show you who the people are who are involved in these areas. And I've had pretty great success just messaging people on LinkedIn and saying, hey, I'm really interested in your work. Can we connect so I can follow you? And people 
like to talk about what they do. They like to talk about what they're interested in. So if you reach out to someone expressing interest in what they do, you'll probably get a pretty positive reception from a good number of people with that. And I found that to be a really useful tool to find and build connections within this industry, which is not being afraid to reach out to people and say, hey, I like what you do and I want to see more. Yeah. And I think it's, it's interesting that you bring up LinkedIn because whenever I talk to students, I'm like, that's my area of expertise. And, and mostly just because that's where I've found the most yeah. value in my own personal career. And I think yeah. you bring up a really good point about that outreach. And so I get a lot of questions about that. You know, how should I reach out and where I'm seeing most of the issues is that not necessarily Udacity students, but most of the people that I talk to, they're finding a job first and then they're reaching out to try to connect with people yeah. on that job. And so I encourage them to like put yourself in that person's shoes, right? It's like you almost, it's almost kind of like you're using me in order to get this job. So yeah. you brought up a really good point about like the, the point is not to get a job. The point is to connect. The point is to build relationships. The point is to exactly. learn. And that's why a lot of this career stuff needs to be done proactively instead of waiting for a job opening and then reaching out because then that interaction becomes very transactional. Exactly. And it's not as genuine in terms of that relationship building because obviously, you know, if you're having those conversations with people and you do that, you maybe contribute to their content on LinkedIn, you leave comments on their posts, like that's how you start to develop that relationship. And then maybe several months down the road, then you reach out and say, hey, I saw an opportunity at your company. Can you kind of plug me in or connect? But I think people are so, um, they, they, they get in that, that reactive mindset. Like I need to see a job, then I need to apply, then I need to reach out to somebody. And that's just not the best way of going about doing it. And so I really like the point that, that you yeah. brought up as it relates to just trying to connect with people and learning more about their experience and having a genuine interest of connecting with people. Definitely. Um, also, you brought up a really good point about the networking. Like networking is not just you going to an event that is labeled networking event and going around and talking to a bunch of strangers. Like you said, like these types of conversations happen in your everyday life and at workshops, at conferences, at meetups, at one-on-one -on -one, uh, you know, situations. And so I really like the fact that you, you're saying a lot of things that are in alignment with what we teach, um, especially from the careers perspective. And I think you're a really good example of what happens when you follow that path um, versus kind of the, the the quick results path that just yeah. doesn't really tend to work too well for people. Yeah, um, if I could jump in again, I would just add on to that to say I think this is especially important for an industry like autonomous systems that's still kind of an emerging industry that's finding its footing. And so it can be really easy to feel like everybody in this industry already knows each other and that all of the jobs and resources and information is just kind of staying within that very closed system. And just sending your resume in on job applications is easy and quick, but probably not the best way to break into that system. But connecting with people and building those relationships, that can really be your foot in the door. Okay. So I want to I wanna open it up to some questions, but I have one last kind of question that I want from you. So if I was a Udacity student and I just finished my nano degree program and I'm looking for ways to stand out in this industry, give me like your, your top piece of advice, like whether it's relates to like the industry, maybe like give me like your, your top ideal campus. So that does depend a lot on the nano degree program that you've completed. Someone coming out of intro to self-driving cars is going to look a lot different as a candidate than someone coming out of sensor fusion. But in general, and something that I think Udacity does do well, is that it's really great to have actual projects that you can show and have those concrete examples of these are not just the skills I learned, but how I actually applied those skills. That's something that employers really look for because it shows that you don't just have a theoretical understanding, you actually have that hands-on experience. So I would say get your portfolio of your nano degree program projects ready to go as something that you can show off to employers. And while you're job searching, find a side project that you can work on and continue to hone your skills in a very applied setting. Okay, great. And so are employers taking close looks at, at GitHub? Some do, some don't, but probably best to prepare for the ones that do. 
so that you won't be so caught unawares. Have, okay, so definitely have at least somewhere where you're showcasing the yeah. product. Yeah, so have, have somewhere, doesn't particularly matter where, but somewhere that employers can go to see examples of what you've done. Okay, awesome. Thank you for all of that. So now, um, for those of you who are joining us, we're going to open it up for questions. So if you want to, feel free to unmute yourself, feel free to turn on the camera, um, or feel free to type in the chat box and I'll read the question aloud. Um, but now's your chance. Uh, most of the time talking to us career experts, we're not experts in the industry. So this is your chance to really connect with somebody who is uh, present in the industry and has some inside knowledge about what goes on. So what questions do you all have? Um, like I said, feel free to type in the chat box or unmute yourself um, right now. Any questions at all? I know some people are itching to get their questions answered. This is your chance. I'm only here to observe. Okay. <laughs> all right. Happy observing. Right. Okay, so um, while we wait, Vienna, what are some questions that you think they should be asking? I think a lot of students think a lot about what is sort of the proper order of nano degree programs that should be taking and what prerequisites do they need to have before they go into a spe specific nano degree program. And so the path that I generally lay out is a little more self-driving car centric since that is my area of expertise. But I would say for someone who's coming in with absolutely no background in programming or software engineering at all, start out with your degree a degree that one gives you a nice foundation that you can build on to go into something like intro to self-driving cars which you can take and do fine and if you have minimal programming background and from then on you can go into self-driving cars or robotics or one of the other more advanced ones okay so i see we, we have a question excellent um, so uh henry's asking are most self-driving car related jobs concentrated in silicon valley um uh, what are the chances of self-driving engineer outside of silicon valley Oh, oh, this is a great question. I'm so glad you asked this. So it does seem like a lot of the jobs are in Silicon Valley, and I know that can be a little daunting, but that is definitely not the case. Right now, a lot of jobs are still concentrated, at least in the U.S., in some of the more urban coastal areas. But for example, Boston has several that I've seen. New York has several that I've seen. Voyage, the company that I mentioned earlier, they're operating in Florida. That's where the retirement community they work in is located. So we definitely are starting to see this spread. And there's a lot going on internationally as well. So for example, Udacity has a free course on self-driving cars that we did in partnership with Baidu based in China. So there's a lot going on there as well. And I think that one of the biggest things this industry needs is to spread beyond those urban coastal regions so I think it would be really great to see more of that. And a lot of these companies as well, some or all of the work can be done remotely depending on the position in the company. So that may be an option as well if you're not necessarily located right where the company is, but you're doing a job that can be done from anywhere. Awesome. Great question, Henry. Anybody else have um, additional questions? We maybe have time for maybe one or two more. Um, but like I said, feel free to type it in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself and ask. But yeah, great question, Henry. Um, okay, so we have a couple. I Ira asks, do you have to collect your own data? Could you Ira, clarify a little yeah, what that means, Ira? Yeah, could you be a little bit more specific with your question and we'll answer uh, the next question. What about the labs opportunities or jobs other than those in the industry? Okay, so if you're looking for something that's maybe related, but not necessarily like going to work for Lyft, something, obviously I'm a little biased, but something like education could be a good opportunity for that as well, where even if you're not the one building, say, a self-driving car yourself, you can still have those tools and that knowledge and use that to educate other people about that. So I think that's a really good option as well if you maybe don't want to be 
right in the weeds with it, but still want to kind of have a foot in that industry. Gotcha. And I'm assuming that a lot of, as this continues to grow, because it's still a very new industry, right? And so- Yeah, there's a lot still being figured out. Yeah, it's only going to continue to grow. I'm sure there's going to be a large kind of implementation with businesses as well as, you know, consumers. So I think that there's Absolutely. going to be a ton of opportunity. So if this is something that you're pursuing, I, I, and you, maybe you can touch on this too, Vienna, but yeah. I, I have conversations with people. A lot of people in tech feel like they need to rush at like the speed of technology. And sometimes yeah. I have to remind them that honestly, any of the nano degree programs that Udacity offers are extremely high demand skills and are, in my opinion, only going to continue to grow. Um, so maybe you can chat about just kind of like people who feel the need to like become experts in this like as soon as possible. Yeah, I think that's a really good point that this industry is growing fast. And while it may be changing a lot, it's not going away anytime soon. So if it takes you a little more time to develop a skill set that you feel really confident in, that's perfectly fine. You should go for that and try to present yourself as the best candidate you can be rather than trying to rush into something just for the sake of getting there fast. Awesome. I definitely agree with that. Um, okay, so we can take maybe one more question. Ira, if you can specify your question or if somebody has um, a new question or something, this is going to be the last one we take before we wrap up. Okay, so uh, she missed the beginning from the last self-driving car webinar she attended. It seems like <clears throat> seems the bottleneck is the input data shortage. Is this also your case? Still not 100% sure what you're asking, but I'll take a guess. So if you're asking about self-driving cars needing to have a lot of data in order to operate most effectively that is definitely true and that is something that is being worked on right now so i i live in palo alto so i see the waymo vehicles out on the roads every single day and they're just driving around continuing to collect data so that is definitely something that we're still working on and the more data the better in cases like this awesome so thank you, Vienna, for sharing your insights. Thank you, all, everyone, for attending and asking great questions. Um, if you missed any of this, um, we're going to have it recorded and uploaded to the YouTube page. So feel free to rewatch back if you, if you missed anything or, or want to kind of hear this again. But thanks again uh, to Vienna. Thank you to the viewers. Um, and thank you all who may be rewatching this. Um, yeah, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Vienna. Yeah, thanks for having me, Brett. All right. Bye. Bye.